All right, thanks for watching. And today I'm going to evaluate a beautiful integral that involves the golden ratio. And the golden ratio is this magical number that appears everywhere in nature. For example, I'm sure you've seen this green cauliflower that just spirals out. Well, this can be written in terms of a golden ratio. Or back in Italian Renaissance, they measured the beauty of a face by saying that the ratio of the height to the width has to be the golden ratio. And of course, it appears in Fibonacci numbers and bunnies, right? Okay, so what is the golden ratio? It's just phi is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. And the only thing you need to know today about the golden ratio is that it satisfies the equation phi squared equals to phi plus 1. So, in particular, it's very easy to square the golden ratio. You just add one to it. All right, and so how can we evaluate this integral? I wish there was a systematic way of doing this, but right now I can't really think of one. But I'm going to present you a tricky way to find a systematic way. Just reverse all the steps. That would work. All right. So, step one, again, I'm going to find an antiderivative and show that it's an antiderivative, but the question is, how can we guess it? Well, uh, this thing, you can just write it as 1 plus x to the phi to the minus phi, and well, a guess for an antiderivative would be 1 to the x to the phi of 1 minus phi. Oh. This almost works, of course, with constants and stuff. This almost works, except it turns out we have to multiply this by x. So let's consider the following. x times 1 plus x to the phi to the 1 minus phi prime. So the same thing, the, 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 the same thing, but with x. So let's differentiate this. So 1 plus x to the phi to the 1 minus phi, and now plus x times the derivative of this, and of course you have a Chen Lu party, so you differentiate the outside. 1 minus phi times 1 plus x to the phi, and the price you pay is 1, so you subtract 1 from the uh, exponent, and now you differentiate the inside, which becomes phi times x to the phi minus 1. I know, lots of fees, but good thing we're not in phoenix. <laughs> okay, now the next step <laughs> is to factor out, you know, 1 plus x to the phi to the minus phi. Of course, there are many different ways of doing this, but let's do it my way. Okay, so 1 plus x to the phi to the minus phi. On the one hand, we still have a factor of 1 plus x to the phi. On the other hand, we have x times 1 minus phi times phi times x to the phi minus 1. Which we can simplify, and we'll do this right now. So that becomes 1 plus x to the phi to the minus phi times 1 plus x to the phi. This becomes x to the phi times phi times 1 minus phi. And we'll notice there's this common factor of x to the phi. So it's 1 plus x to the phi to the minus phi times 1 plus x to the phi times 1 plus, let's expand that out too phi minus phi squared. All right, this looks pretty complicated. That said, remember what I told you at the beginning? The most important thing to know about the golden ratio is that phi squared is phi plus 1. And in particular, 1 plus phi minus phi squared becomes 0. 
So this whole thing disappears, so there's no x to the phi term and 1 is 1. So in the end, we get x to the phi to the minus phi. So indeed, if you differentiate this function, you get our original function back. And now, we just need to calculate the integral. So it's the fun part. So step two. Integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus x to the phi to the phi dx. Now that we have an antiderivative, it's just x times 1 plus x to the phi to the 1 minus phi from 0 to infinity. Which tells us, on the one hand, we need to calculate the limit x goes to infinity of x times, if you want, let's write it this way, x times x to the phi plus 1 to the phi minus 1, because this becomes positive, that's why I wrote it this way, and the other terms, you just plug in 0, so you get 0, and I'm not kidding, it took me an hour to figure out what to do with this limit, because I tried out everything. I tried out L'Hopital's. I tried out squeeze theorem. It didn't work. And then I was like, oh my god, don't forget your basic limit techniques. First of all, if you do L'Hopital's, it becomes kind of cute. It just cycles more or less. Or it just becomes very complicated. But remember, one of the limit techniques tells you that it's good to factor out the highest powers from the numerator and the denominator. So this becomes limit x goes to infinity of x times. So now you factor out x to the phi. So 1 plus x to the minus phi times phi minus 1. Okay, so this whole thing, I believe, All right, and then that becomes limit x goes to infinity of x to the x to the phi times phi minus 1 okay. times the other factor 1 plus x to the minus phi times phi minus 1. All right, this looks like a disaster. But remember, we do have the golden equation for phi. We do know that phi squared equals to phi plus 1. So, in particular, this phi times phi minus 1, that's phi squared minus phi, and that becomes 1. So, in other words, this really complicated factor here is just 1. And so you're left with limit x goes to infinity of x over x times 1 plus x to the minus phi times phi minus 1. It's cool. It's like this battle between x's and phi's. And right now the x's seem to be winning, except, oh no, <laughs> the x's cancel out and the phi's actually win. And you're left with limit x goes to infinity of 1 over 1 plus x to the minus phi to the phi minus 1. And then if you do that, you believe you get 1 over um, 1 plus 0 to the phi minus 1. This is finite, so we're fine. And then we have 1. So in the end, our golden integral, and it's very pretty, 1 over, uh, what was that? <laughs> I forgot what the integral was. Uh, yeah, 1 plus x to the phi to the phi dx. It equals to 1. So look how pretty it is that, you know, this integral equals to 1. But yes, so if you like this beautiful integral and want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.